Now I'm getting to, as we talked about, we talked about pre-renal and intra-renal failure. There was post-renal, but I will omit that one because it's not so clear with the post-renal. But clinically, it is very clear with post-renal because if you put Foley catheter and suddenly like you get two liters of urine, you know, it was post-renal, okay? But anyways, so now what I want to tell you is what to look for in blood and urinalysis to tell a difference if the problem is still pre-renal or if it already transformed into intrarenal, okay? So I'm going to put, I'll put it in blue. So pre-renal azotemia or acute kidney injury and intrarenal azotemia or in other words acute tubular necrosis so the necrosis term it can be only like ischemia and just a bit of necrosis or like full necrosis it depends but how can you tell from blood and urine so from blood if you check the blood there is a very important ratio that you should look for and that's the blood urea nitrogen to creatinine and the outcome is that you look at this ratio with the u.s units and if the ratio is bigger than 20 to 1 you know it's rather pre-renal azotemia still when this ratio gets below 20 to 1 so if the bun to creatinine is less than 20 to 1. In other words, that the creatinine increases more than in the case of pre-renal, so it could be like 10 to 1, then you know it's intrarenal. And I will explain it now. What do I mean by that? Well, why bun is so high over here? Both of them are going up. You're having azotemia, both. But in this case, bun is getting up urea is getting up much more in the blood because the resorption in kidneys is working and what controls the resorption adh so adh works in kidneys and kidneys are resorbing blood urea nitrogen so although they are both going up if this one is going up much more it tells you function function of the tubules is still okay but once the ischemia appears in the kidneys and in the tubules suddenly the kidneys will stop resorbing urea and that's why the ratio decreases and now that's why you're having for example, 10 to 1 or below 20 to 1. Because suddenly the creatinine rises more than, than over here. Okay. So it's 10 to 1. Get it? Do you understand it? If I would show you, like, if you have pre-renal over here, and maybe I'll try to draw it that everyone understands in the video, okay? So with the pre-renal, I'll draw a green arrow. So still, if resorption is working over here, the blood urea nitrogen will go much more faster up because there's active resorption. Then the slow excretion of creatinine. The filtration is maybe not as good. That's why the creatinine in the blood goes up, but the bung goes really, really up. So it's working. Over here now, it decreases, it's not working, maybe there is no resorption at all, but you're not filtrating as well. That's why the ratio gets nearer to 10 to one. But they're going up both, but the relatively to the previous case, the bun is not going up as fast as in the functional kidneys. 
And of course, they're both going up because over here you already failed. You're not filtrating anything and it's blocked typically in the serious cases of acute tubular necrosis, okay? So that's blood. But maybe even more obvious for you is urine. Because what happens in urine? In case your kidneys are still functioning, but they're not able to like filter everything, everything works in the kidneys. So they will be able to concentrate the urine. So you will have hyperstenuria. Or in other words, the osmolarity of the urine is going to be more than osmolarity of plasma. So it's going to be definitely more than 500 millimoles per liter. And plasma is like 300 millimoles per liter, okay? So you are able to concentrate. It's working. The urine is going to be very concentrated. Okay, but watch out, it's going to be concentrated, but the ion that will not be so much secreted is the one that you are normally resorbing all the time, and that's sodium. So remember, the fractal excretion of sodium will be below 1%, because aldosterone is working, and you are resorbing sodium and water all the time. Kidneys are working, so you don't want to get rid of sodium normally. So also the concentration of the sodium in the urine is going to be definitely a bit below 20 millimoles per liter. Those are normally functioning kidneys. There's just a slower flow to them. But once they will start to have intrarenal problem, it's going to be intrarenal acute kidney injury. Well, then typically you will have something which is called isostenuria. And I told you a lot about it before. So now the specific gravity of urine has same numbers as of the blood. Or even lower, it can have hypostenuria. But th what this means, isostenuria means you're not able to concentrate. You are not resorbing anything. So that's why the osmolarity of the urine is going to be equal or less than 300 millimoles per liter. That's why the fina, because you are not now, you're not able anymore to take care of the sodium to resorb it. So fina is going to be more than 2% fractal excretion of sodium, fina. And that's why the concentration of sodium is going to be higher than 20 millimoles per liter. Okay, so this is the way if you check the blood and urine and to know why there is azotemia. If it's pre-renal, you check the urea. If it's higher, it's pre-renal. If the urea is not going up and now rather relatively creatinine is really going up, you know it's already intrarenal failure. Okay, so this was one slide. So these were the differences between Prerenal and intrarenal. That's the, the main ones you care about. And questions? So, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.